Come on, hear what the Lord's saying. In this season of time, the things that have been working against us are getting ready to start working for us. Amen? In other words, the curse is being turned to a blessing for us. Amen? This is such a key season that we've got to shake off the heaviness. We've got to shake off the drama and the trauma. And we've got to rise up and understand that God wants to break through for you. But God also wants to break through through you. In doing this, you'll see change in your family, change in your finances, change in your circumstances, change in your marriage. Come on, if you will fully engage... You know what you want to know what one of my pet peeves is? I could give you my list, okay, but I'll just tell you. One of my pet peeves is people that expect all the blessings of the kingdom, but don't ever apply the principles of the kingdom. Okay? In other words, I read you a wonderful scripture that says, let, you know, bring the tithes into the storehouse. Do you know what it says right before that? Why have you robbed me? <laughs> Some people, they're like, pray for me, pastor. I need financial breakthrough. Prophesy to me, pastor. I need financial breakthrough. And then I say, well, do you, do you give tithes? Do you give offerings? Well, no. I could pray for you all day long, but if you're not practicing the principle, then you don't get the promise. Amen? And so I think that this is the time that we've got to actually engage. We've actually got to believe what we believe we believe, and we've got to press in. I believe that this is a season when the impossible becomes possible. Now, Jesus had a tipping point moment before he went to the cross. It was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Do you remember this? How many know at that point, Jesus, 100% God and 100% man, at that point, Jesus could have walked away. If he couldn't have walked away, then, then it wouldn't have been a sacrifice. But at that point, he could have walked away, and he asked his disciples, please pray with me. Please pray with me. Matthew ch chapter 26, verse 40. It says this. It says, then he came to his disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus is calling us to watch and pray. You can say, well, I'm not really a watchman. I'm not really an intercessor. And my question then is, why not? Well, that's not my anointing. No, it's not your discipline. Jesus didn't say watch and pray if you feel like it. And clearly the disciples didn't feel like it. So he said, come on, guys. Couldn't you even do this for an hour? Watch and pray. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 says this. It says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful. I'm going to read it from this translation. The, the, the King James says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. What's interesting is that word watching means to stay awake and watch, to be attentive and to be ready. God is looking for watchmen that are watching over your family. Come on, that are watching over our schools, that are watching over governmental issues, that are watching over local government, state government, national government, that are watching over global things. Are we watching? Are we praying? It's not enough to watch if you don't pray. Prophets, I'm talking to you. Don't think we can just watch and prophesy if we're not willing to follow up our prophecy with prayer. And here's the other thing. You can't just pray and not watch. You can't just pray your little list. Pray, oh, I did my list. I did my thing today, okay? We've got to watch. We've got to stay sharp in the spirit. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says, Be sober. Be sober-minded and watchful. Another translation says vigilant. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. 
Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. I've got a preacher over here. She's going to come preach with me. She's going to preach with me someday. This is not a fear-based scripture. This is a reality. This is not meant to instill fear, even though I put a really scary lion up there. But it's facing us with the reality that we've got to stay sober-minded. That word watchful is the word that means be vigilant, and it actually means to walk watching. To walk watching. In other words, it's not just time to watch when you're doing devotions. It's time to watch when you go to Walmart. It's time to watch when you're in your office. It's time to watch and pray no matter where you are. God is calling us to be watchmen. Now, in the Old Testament, we see watchmen located in three places. We see them on walls and watchtowers. In Isaiah 62, verse 6, it says, On your walls, O Jerusalem, I have appointed watchmen. All day and all night, they will never keep silent. You that remind the Lord, take no rest for yourselves. So, so what they did is they stood up on these walls so that they could see a long way in the distance and they would begin to call out when somebody was approaching. And they would have to discern. Everybody say discern. They would have to discern, is this a friend approaching or is this an enemy that's approaching? They would have to understand so that they could then sound the alarm. See, when they were watching, then they had the capacity to sound the alarm. And there's a lot of scriptures in the Old Testament that said, the blood is going to be on the hands of the watchman if you don't sound the alarm. There's a lot of things going on in the, in the world today, and so much of the church world just wants to be so careful not to offend people. And I'm telling you, when somebody's on a train that's getting ready to run into a ravine that has no tracks, and you're just going to stand by and sing Kumbaya, I'm telling you what we've got to do is we've got to start raising a battle cry. We've got to start raising an alarm and say, no, that every lifestyle isn't acceptable, and no, there are not many ways to go to heaven. Such a a compromised Christianity. So they would, they would be up on the walls in the watchtowers. They would also be on the hilltops. They would build watchtowers on top of the hilltops so that they could watch over the harvest. Remember in Gideon's day how the Amalekites, the robbers, and the Midianites would come in and they would rob the threshing floors. They would rob the harvest out of them. It says in Jeremiah 31, 6, it says, The day will come when watchmen will shout from the hill country of Ephraim, Come, let us go up to Jerusalem to worship the Lord our God. We've got, a, we've got things breaking out. We've got revival breaking out. We've got awakening, anointing, miracles breaking out. We've got to watch over that. We've got to watch and pray over what God is doing in the earth today. And the third place that they would be is they would watch at the gate. Proverbs 8, 34 says, Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of the doors. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. How many want favor from the Lord? We all want the favor. Here's the discipline. Blessed is the man that listens to me. <laughs> I could stop and preach a message on that right there. Watching daily at the gates. What are the gates? The gates are the the access points into our lives, the access points into society. Watching over the media gate, watching over the business gate, watching over the government gate, the education gate. You know what? Thank God for, for men like Jason Catalano that stepped up and said, I'm going to watch over the education gate because there's a lot of nonsense going on in schools all over the world, all over the nation today because people aren't watching Believers aren't watching, praying, and making a stand. And as a result, the floodgates are open, but they're open the wrong way. 